So what positions am I currently holding right now? What's going on team? It's Ricky with Tackbot Solutions. I wanted to ask you before we get started with today's video, I wanted to film a video where I talk about my best trading week ever. And that was this past week. So I know that I've been showing a lot of big numbers with the profits that I've been making the past week. And I need you guys to all know that this is like the peak of my experience trading. I don't ever want you to try to compare yourself to me if you're someone that's just getting started as we're all at different levels and just being completely open. We're all trading with different dollar amounts as well. So with that being said, I wanted to ask you, I wanted to break down my past week of trading and what I think has led to my success in tomorrow's video. If you would like me to make that video, all I ask you is to comment down below what you would like to see and as well as drop a thumbs up and if this video gets over 1000 likes i'd love to do so so i'm going to start sharing my screen so you guys can see exactly what it is that i currently still own as of right now so total on the day 5600 dollars profit and i'm going to be breaking down the series of stocks that i have in my watch list and if i'm not mistaken it's a total of seven of them so the first one is Tesla, of course. And one of the things that I've been sharing with you guys is making sure that, you know, in the very beginning when Tesla began this overall push, I would day trade Tesla with about 150 to about 200 shares day trade. But when it came down to holding overnight, I held about 100 to around 50, right? Now that we're reaching these overbought levels close to $900, a lot of people are beginning to ask the question, you know, when is Tesla going to pull back? It's not that Tesla is going to crash, but there's been a lot of pullbacks, a lot of healthy pullbacks, which happen to every stock. And it's bound to happen to Tesla. And that is essentially why I haven't been holding super, super aggressive positions like I originally was in the very beginning. It's, of course, great when things are going according to plan, as they have been the past week. But we also need to take into consideration and prepare for the worst, especially when things are presenting themselves to be too good to be true. So this is essentially why I've tried to do my part in every single video that I've uploaded and talking about my profits or talking about my losses, but as well as talking about how I'm able to balance out my position size and I'm able to hold enough money overnight that I feel motivated to follow up with it, have some skin in the game, right? But not so much money that if it pulls back that I feel super, super emotional. And that's one of the things that that I wanted to share with you. The next one, of course, is BABA. I've had up to 400, 450 shares of BABA. And one of the things that you guys should all know right now is I only have 140, which again, for how I normally trade it, that's a little bit more on the lighter side, but it is looking a little bit more on the overbought side. And I'm sharing this with you as someone that's still holding BABA. -B -A. I'm not here to ever tell you that what I buy and what I sell are the best for you, especially because we all see value in different ways and we all have different intentions as either day traders, swing traders, or investors. As of right now, Alibaba has been making consistent lower lows, so it's been great to be able to buy the lows and sell the highs, but as we reach these overbought levels with this descending resistance, as you guys can see, it continues to make these lower highs. It is in my best interest because of these previous descending resistance levels that when I reach $240 and see this overall pattern, that instead of holding my 300 or 400 shares of Alibaba, that I do my part in locking in a portion of my profit so if it pulls back, I can tolerate that movement. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think about that. The next one that I've been getting into is Boeing. Boeing has recently pulled back from 180 day highs at 244. I have a super light position. This is one of the things that I've talked about that I find Boeing as of right now to be a decent deal. Obviously the direction is not in my favor. This is not one that I would recommend for others when it comes down to, you know, is this a buy right now? No, and that's essentially why I only have 40 shares. I'm up on the open, I'm down on the day because it's been making these lower lows and lower highs. I don't plan to buy more Boeing until it begins to indicate signs of an uptrend. So I just wanted to buy a little bit of Boeing as I found it to be a good deal. Just in case it begins to push up, I can buy more, but just in case it begins to sell off, I have such a small position size that I'm not gonna hesitate to cut losses. The next one that I wanna talk about is GPS. Finally, for the past month, GPS has been selling off and as it indicated signs of an uptrend, that's when I began to more aggressively buy GPS and being completely honest, I only own 1,200 shares. So yes, I might be down nearly $100 on the day, but I'm still up on the open, 620 and 
I'm still not very heavily invested. I never jumped into this one just because a lot of my focus has been on stocks like Tesla and on stocks like Baba, where I saw most movement being done with those and I paid just simply less attention to GPS. With that, with that being said, we are approaching this SMA line, which used to act as a support level that can now act as a resistance level. So this following week will determine, are we gonna pull back or are we actually going to break above the SMA line? And if we do, I have my alerts set right here. I'll add more to my position size on GPS as of right now, since I only own 1200 shares of ticker symbol GPS. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. This is ticker symbol BBY. Also a very similar setup to GPS. We've been waiting forever on this one. We've been talking about it since it sold off, since it's been bouncing off that $100 resistance level. And once it began to indicate signs of an uptrend, we began to buy more. And then as it reached you know, the SMA line, which was an old support level, a new resistance level, I began to sell off some of my shares. As of right now, I only own 300 shares. I'm up $1,400 on the open, about $42 down on the day. Next week will determine Am I gonna sell my position if it breaks below the EMA line and heads back down to $100? Or am I going to buy more if it begins to indicate signs of higher highs and higher lows? And you might ask, well, what does that look like? Exactly what it did here. So instead of it selling off like it did like this, I wanna wait for proper indication of an overall uptrend. The next one that I wanna talk about is Lulu. For all my ladies out there, or for you know all the people that like Lululemon, it did reach overbought levels. This is my second time entering Lulu for another position. I did an amazing job the first time as I bought at these lower levels and sold as it approached the 370. As it pulled on back, it's testing the EMA line as a potential support. It can easily head back down, which is why I only have 60 shares. If it begins to indicate signs of an uptrend and bounce off the EMA line, I'll add more to my position size. If it breaks below the EMA line, my position size is so small that I can tolerate that risk and I can simply cut losses with very minimal loss. I hope that makes sense to you. And the other one that I wanna talk about is, Ricky, why would you ever buy SQQQ when the market is so bullish? I'm down $1,000 on this one. This one's my biggest loser as of right now, but the market, overall market is so overbought. This is forward slash NQ, the market's so bullish right now, and I think it's absolutely amazing. But because it just hit 180 day highs and it's so overbought, I'm anticipating a pullback, which is why, if you look at my position size, it's a thousand shares, but that's about $14,000. In the grand scheme of things, I can buy $50,000, $60,000 of SQQQ. So if anything, I'm barely getting my feet wet with my overall position size because the overall direction is of course against me. If I do get confirmation that forward slash NQ begins to pull back and the market begins to sell off, like many of you guys know, SQQQ goes up when the market goes down. And that's essentially what I'm waiting for, just to be able to make money while the market is pulling back and that's kind of my edge. If it continues to push up, I'll probably sell a portion of that SQQQ position just to minimize that position size and of course, minimizing that risk. So let me know in the comments section what you think about my current positions. Would you be someone that would still hold those positions and if you think that I'm missing out on a specific stock, comment that stock down below and why you see value in it. Please don't just comment the ticker symbol because that means absolutely nothing, but just make sure that you do your part in sharing You know, one of the main reasons that you see value in that stock, either as a day trade, swing trade, or overall investment. I hope that I earned your thumbs up in this video. Feel free to comment any questions down in the comment section. And don't forget to join our free Facebook group. That's that first link down below. We have over 296,000 members all over the world. When you're ready to join our trading team and watch me trade live as soon as Monday, this is exclusively the only team that I work with on a closer basis. I offer nothing else. This is the only assistance, day trading live, and A to Z video lesson library. So if you wanna work with me on a closer basis, if you want my time, my attention every single day, this is the only group that I work with. It's the second link down below. Scroll through it, learn a little bit more about it, see what we have to offer, and see if it's a good fit for you. Until then, I hope that we earned your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and if you wanna see that breakdown of my best trading week, please make sure you get this video over 1,000 likes. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.